Hi everyone, welcome to this new video. It's time for another monthly container garden tour to show you some updates and some highlights of the month. Um, this time, whenever I talk about a plant, I'm gonna place a plant name on the screen. That's something that someone suggested recently and I think that's such a great idea because obviously it can be hard to understand those botanical names sometimes. So whenever I talk about a plant, I'm gonna place a plant name on the screen so it's easier for you to understand. And if you are interested in certain plant, you can uh, just take a screenshot or write it down and search for that plant yourself. Um, but before we begin, maybe a couple of words of introduction because there's uh, quite a lot of new people who recently subscribed to the channel. So if you are new here, hi, I'm Dominika. I'm a professional horticulturist and I also happen to be a balcony gardener. I garden on this balcony located in France in zone eight. We have cold winters and hot and humid summers and my balcony is northeast facing. So it's in the shade, as you can see, for most of the day, it only gets a couple of hours of morning sunlight in summer. It's also really windy in here, especially in the spring. Spring is our windiest season. These past couple of weeks were absolutely insane, uh, with strong winds and heavy rain. Many of my plants have suffered quite a bit of damage. For example, my beautiful Japanese maple that I'm going to show you in a moment got literally picked up and tossed across the balcony. Uh, so it can get, get a little bit scary sometimes in here with the wind. But other than that, um, the garden has woken up from its winter dormancy and it never ceases to amaze me how fast our spring season progresses. Like if you watched my uh, tour from last month, from March, you will notice that everything was just like pretty much bare and the plants were just barely starting to wake up. And now we are one month later and it's like almost summer already. So the spring doesn't last very long. It's literally between March and April, that's our spring. And then May is already summer. I'm planting my summer planters in May already. So that spring season progresses really, really rapidly. So as we go, I'm gonna also show you some clips from earlier this month when the spring bulbs were in full bloom because right now there's not much of those spring bulbs left. So let's go, let me show you how the balcony looks mid-April. So let's go out on the balcony like I would normally go out when I check on my plants, so through the kitchen. And from here we can either turn to the right or we can turn to the left and we will start with the left here. So as we go to this corner of the balcony, I want to transform this corner into my vegetable garden. So I want to grow only edibles in here. And as of right now, I have my two blueberry bushes, pink lemonade and Brigida blue. I have some alpine strawberries here and here some radish in these two planters and then in these galvanized buckets i recently transplanted my lettuce uh, lettuce batavia i seeded some arugula in here i also have some parsley and i'm also gonna be planting more herbs um, probably in these two containers later in summer over here we have this absolutely massive hydrangea hydrangea blueberry cheesecake uh, it's an absolute stunner and as you can see it started to produce flower buds already. As we turn around, this is how the balcony looks from this side. And the first thing that I want to show you in here is my new Clematis, Clematis jackmanii, that's growing really, really rapidly um, on this new arch that I just added recently over my bench. On this side, we have some Scabiosa that started to produce flowers already. Such a lovely perennial for partial shade. On the floor, we have some ranunculus that I planted from corms in the spring. So because they are spring planted, they will bloom in summer. And over here, there is a salix tree, woven salix. So I bought this plant on a plant festival, I believe a couple of years ago. And in fact, it's not one single plant. When you look at this from up close, each one of those stems, each one of those twigs is a separate plant. So they just gathered a bunch of twigs, they twisted it together, planted in it in a container and this is how it grows and it's gonna create a lovely canopy of green leaves in summer. I mean already started to leaf out but obviously as the season progresses it's gonna get more and more beautiful. As we move forward this little grouping of plants on the floor here we have evergreen fern uh, and we have some last tulips left. As I said most of my tulips are now done blooming but these are one of the last remaining ones. These are called healthcare tulips and aren't they absolutely stunning and so unique looking. This is a fairly new variety. I believe they were, um, they are available on the market since the pandemic, I think, because they are called healthcare and I think they were um, made 
kind of in honor for all the healthcare workers during the pandemic. Such a beautiful tulip. I won't be keeping the bulbs because usually tulip bulbs don't come back well from year to year. So uh, it's not worth keeping them, but I would definitely want to plant them again on my balcony. And here are some other tulips and spring bulbs that I grew on my balcony this year. We have tulip Miss Elegance, Daffodil Talia and Tulip Infinity. And as we turn around and we look at this area from here, there's another grouping of plants on the floor. This is Lily Candy Blossom, beautiful pink lily with double blooms. Uh, and I'm keeping them as perennials, so that's why they are already so large, because normally I will be just planting lilies now. Uh, but since they are perennials, they already started to grow. Uh, behind we have a rose, a climbing rose. This is an experiment because obviously roses need full sun exposure to grow at least six hours of sunlight a day, uh, which is not what they are getting on my balcony. But this rose, Mary Delany, is said to tolerate or is said to grow well with a little bit less than six hours of sunlight. So um, I'm giving it, a, giving it a try. So far so good. As you can see, it produces healthy foliage and so far it's growing well. Another little plant that I wanted to show you in here is the Sedum palmarii. It's such a small little plant, but it's just so, so cheerful. Look at this plant, completely covered in yellow blooms. I absolutely love it. It also overwinters on the balcony. Then in the spring, I get to enjoy these beautiful flowers. And one other thing I wanted to show you. Bees have been nesting in this bee house. I know that it's like against all the rules because the bee house not only is standing on the floor but it's also next to my window where I'm like walking here several times a day but I initially put this bee hotel on my um, privacy screen over there but the wind uh, knocked it down on the floor and it kind of crashed so I brought it here I repaired the roof and I just kind of left it in here and all of a sudden bees started to come here to to nest in it it was like hung on that privacy screen for like two years and nothing happened and the moment i placed it here on the floor uh, they started to nest and now it's been like three years that i have bees come in and, and nesting in this hotel all right so let's continue and as we move forward i think the first thing that you'll see is this absolute stunner clematis montana maylin that's in full bloom right now absolute stunner it smells divine i absolutely love the scent it's just very delicate sweet scent not too overwhelming and it's covered in flowers i recently posted a guide on how to grow beautiful clematises in containers this guide is uh, available to my silver members uh, and i cover everything from the choice of the container to potting mix, to fert through fertilizing, pruning and watering, uh, everything. So if you would like to join my membership program, you can click the join button just below the video. All right, uh, on this side, we have a hydrangea, another hydrangea uh, that's also starting to produce flower buds already. And on the other side, I recently transplanted yet another Snapdragon. This is a taller variety called Snapdragon Lucky Lips. As we move forward, Japanese maple, Acer garnet, looking absolutely stunning. Look at this foliage, just gorgeous, gorgeous color. There's another one back there, which is called Acer orange dream. And I absolutely love how it changes colors throughout the seasons. It starts as a like yellowish kind of green in the spring. Then it becomes more chartreuse, more lime green and then it becomes completely green, like darker green in summer and bright orange in autumn. Such a beautiful cultivar. But before we start with this shady corner, just one look on how the things look from up here. We have some forget-me-nots in these planters. I grew them from seeds and they are now in full bloom, looking really cute. Below we have some lilies. Another lily that I keep as a perennial. This one is a little bit beaten up because of the strong winds. And then the, when the acer fell on the floor, I actually had this lily over there and the acer kind of smashed the lily and actually lost, I think, about three stems, uh, which is a such, it's such a bummer. Below we have Chiarella, really lovely perennial also. Great for partial shade and for full shade. And now the shade garden. 
the area that does not receive any direct sunlight at all. And here we have Podophyllum spotidoti, such a unique looking plant. I added it to my garden last year. Just love these leaves, they look so unique. And it also blooms, I mean, it's about to bloom. And these funny looking flower buds. I believe it has red flowers, so I'm really looking forward to seeing it. Below there is a hosta, hosta halcyon. Love those velvety heart-shaped leaves. Such a beautiful color as well. This one is really large, so it soon will need probably repotting and dividing. Then we have a silver fern, Athurium nipponicum pictum. Really love this one as well. Look at those silvery, kind of purplish silvery leaves. Such a stunner. Below, yet another great perennial for full shade and partial shade, Branera. This one is called Branera macrophylla uh, variegata. I love these uh, forget-me-not like looking flowers. Uh, Hakanacloa, yet another why do I keep calling them hydrangeas? Yet another hosta. This one is called Hosta Royal. Beautiful green foliage. And just some ornamental grass. I have those grasses kind of you know, tucked in all over the balcony. These are Carex Evergold. Beautiful evergreen. Quite winter hardy as well. And there's space left for some other plants. As you can see, I'm going to be adding a couple of more perennials uh, to my shady garden. I'm going to be sharing that with you in the upcoming videos, obviously. Okay, so this is how the balcony looks mid-April. I have a lot of things to do this month. I'm going to be continuing to transplant my seedlings to their final pots. I have a whole bunch of summer bulbs and tubers to plant, which I'm going to share with you in the upcoming videos. So hope that you guys enjoyed seeing this little update on the balcony. Thanks so much for joining me today and we'll see each other in the next video. Bye!